Wow! Hey, what's up guys? It is good to see you again. In today's video, we are getting crazy with chemical experiments. Now for this video, I was scrolling through the comments and I found this request from Spoon Capizzi, who says, if you mix brake fluid and chlorine, the mixture will self-ignite. This is an experiment you may be familiar with by now, but I think the real request is to push the experiment to the boundaries and explain what's actually taking place. Now to get the chemicals we need for our experiment today, I made two quick pit stops. The first one was to a pool supply store to pick some of this fast dissolving shock treatment for swimming pools. And the second stop was to the auto parts store to pick up some DOT3 brake fluid. I'm reading the warning label and funny enough, it doesn't say anywhere on here that you can't mix with pool chlorine. Does that mean we can't? Well, let me show you what happens if you do. You might have noticed on the bag of pool shock chlorine, it contains 73% calcium hypochlorite, so really high concentration of available chlorine. The brake fluid is a mixture of ethylene glycols, and when you mix these two chemicals together, a very interesting reaction occurs. Now, if we snip the end off of our pool chlorine and pour out the contents, you can see it's really just a granulated white powder. And if you're standing too close, it'll start to smell like a swimming pool, and you might even feel it starting to sting your nostrils. So here's the setup guys, I just filled up this glass about half an inch full at the bottom with pool shock chlorine and I've got our DOT3 brake fluid we're ready to pour in. We're going to carefully add our brake fluid in equal proportions so that it comes just to the top of the chlorine, then we're going to give it a little shake, set it down on the top of this brick and start a timer and then get very very far away for about two minutes. Now once these two chemicals mix together, it doesn't really look like anything's happening, it's just sitting there. There's no smoke, there's no steam, it just sits there doing nothing. And we're over a minute and 20 seconds now and nothing has really changed, but watch this. Bangerang, baby, did you see that? It sat there for about one minute and 35 seconds and it looked like it was doing absolutely nothing. It was completely calm, no smoke, and then just out of nowhere, boom, the whole thing combusts, a flame shoots up about four feet in the air, and then we get all this ash that bubbles up and spews over the edge. That was an epic reaction. So let's do one more of those and then talk about what's happening. Nothing like the itchy sensation of chlorine in the nostrils in the morning. So what I do for you guys. Pour that in and hit start. Maybe about that much. If you look down at this, it looks like nothing is happening whatsoever. It's just sitting there. You don't see any smoke, no heat. If I feel the glass, I don't even feel it warming up. Occasionally a little bubble, but I think that's just because of the oil sinking down. But we do want to get very far away. We want to back up and just watch it patiently because a reaction is taking place. Watch this. So we just passed a minute now since we added the brake fluid and absolutely nothing's happening. It's just sitting there. It's just sitting there silently like a crocodile waiting for the kill. But something's gonna happen. Just wait for it. It's a minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> Man, that stuff shot right out the top. I think that was an even bigger flame that time. That one shot up about five feet high and it was right at the one minute 35 second mark, which is very consistent to the first test that we did. So now that we've verified that this reaction works and it works very consistently, I reached out to my friend Nerdridge for an explanation of what's taking place. And he gave me some really good insight that I think we should talk about. Now on the warning label here, it says that our brake fluid is a mixture of glycol ethers, basically long hydrocarbons very similar to oil. The difference being that brake fluid has oxygen inserted every two carbons. Now technically this fluid is flammable, but it's very, very hard to ignite, and that's why it's generally considered safe for use with your brakes. Now the actual reaction taking place when the brake fluid makes contact with the pool chlorine is a free radical breakdown of the polyethylene glycol. It basically breaks the glycol down into lighter components like aldehydes. Now this takes time, which is why the reaction doesn't begin right away, but as the simpler aldehydes build up, they start reacting with the oxygen in the pool chlorine to form water and carbon dioxide. This is basically a simple combustion reaction. The reaction is exothermic and produces a tremendous amount of heat to the point where it actually vaporizes the aldehydes and bursts into flame. Yes, it actually gets so hot that the brake fluid vapors self-ignite. And if you were to put this reaction inside of a sealed container, the container would explode. Now let's talk for just a second about the white vapors coming off of this reaction. I've heard concerns from some people wondering if that's toxic chlorine gas. Now chlorine is very discernible, it's very toxic, it starts stinging your nose and your lungs immediately with very low concentration. And during all of these experiments and reactions that I've tried, the smell of chlorine is negligible. I actually get a stronger smell of chlorine when I'm just pouring the powder into the glass itself. The white fumes we're seeing are actually broken down and vaporized brake fluid. Those are the flammable vapors that burst into fire as soon as the temperature gets hot enough. Let's set up two more experiments just to see how this reacts in different scenarios. One out in the open air and the other in the confined space of a soda bottle.
Okay, so that was a little bit surprising. I thought out in the open air it would actually take longer to react, but it actually went off in 54 seconds. That's really interesting. Nice chemical residue. And my friend Mark just brought up a good point. Don't stir this stuff up with your fingers, guys, because any chemical residue can ignite and burn your skin. Okay, so we've seen this reaction in a glass. We've seen it in the open air. Our last experiment is in a plastic soda bottle. I think I'm just gonna give this one a little bit too much. Uh, much too much. <laughs> just for the record, that is way too much. This should be fun. Fourth and final. Here we go. This one might happen a little faster. Maybe not. There's one minute. Whoa! Woo! Wow! Oh my goodness. Holy heck. Okay, so what was really interesting about that, it was still only about a minute and 30 seconds, the same as our other reaction, but the difference is the flame shot out like rocket fuel. The color of the flame itself was like a deep red or a magenta, and it shot up ridiculously high. I mean, it, it almost looked like a rocket engine turned upside down. Not quite as much power, of course, but very, very satisfying. And it was like shooting hot chlorine tablets into the air, and they were raining down the back of my shirt, which is absolutely nuts. I'm actually quite surprised that it took that long for the reaction to start because in a confined container I would have expected the heat to build a little bit more quickly. But that was very consistent with the other reactions that we've experimented with today. The thing is, when it goes off in the bottle, it's just a lot more violent. And imagine if that were capped off, we'd have a bottle bomb on our hands. What's really amazing to me is how deceiving this reaction is. Like it just sits there, nothing's happening at all, and then out of nowhere, BAM! This huge fireball, super violent reaction that you don't want to be standing anywhere near. Yeah, it's amazing. You only get like a split second with white vapor coming out of the bottle and then boom, the whole thing ignites, the bottle completely illuminates, and then you see this fire stack just shooting out of the top. And that right there is where it gets extremely violent. The flame shoots out of frame and starts spewing chemical into the air, raining down ashes everywhere. Man, so it goes from this stream of fire to like a blowtorch. <laughs> like seriously, that's a lot of fire. The other thing that you notice is the plastic bottle shrinks. Like the heat of the reaction shrinks the plastic and then catches it on fire where it just burns away to nothing. So very intense experiment to say the least. Not an experiment you need to try at home. It's one of those things where the manufacturer says use the product only as intended for these kinds of reasons. So kind of fun experiments here guys. Let's talk about what just happened. We started off our experiment today with pool shock chlorine and DOT3 brake fluid. Those specific chemicals when mixed together start an exothermic reaction that disassociates the polyethylene glycol into lighter and much more flammable aldehyde. When this exothermic reaction accelerates enough, it'll eventually hit the point where the brake fluid will vaporize and those flammable vapors will self-ignite. And we tried three different scenarios. We stuck this combination in a glass, out in the open air, and in a soda bottle. And surprisingly, we found that the reaction in the open air went off quicker than the ones in the confined spaces, which is exactly opposite of what I would have expected. So there we have it, guys. Based on our experiments today, we now have a deepened understanding as to why mixing different chemicals together can lead to disastrous results and are often not recommended to be tried at home. And of course, a huge shout out to Spoon Capizzi for leaving this suggestion in the first place and to all 580 of you who upvoted it. Go ahead and check your YouTube inbox, Spoon. We're sending you 25 bucks. Hey, thanks for joining me for this experiment. I'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then. Interesting chemical residue. You can hear the comments. Global warming. Hey guys, I wanted to jump back in for just a second to invite you to come follow me on Instagram. I've got a very active page where I post daily pictures and stories of behind the scenes and every day is an adventure. Just take five seconds right now to click the link in the description to come follow me on Instagram at the King of Random. I'll see you there.